Hello and welcome to Kigali, Rwanda and the 2018 African Regional Conference. I'm joined today by the Governor of the National Bank of Rwanda, John Rangombwa. Governor, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Now, we've heard a lot of this year's arc about issues around transforming the future, innovation, technology and development for economic growth. The National Bank of Rwanda has been championing uh, a cashless economy here in Rwanda and pushing hard on that front for, for, for a while now. Can you tell us what will this bring to Rwanda? How will this help the economy to develop? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I think one important point we are looking at here is financial inclusion. Uh, as Rwanda, our main objective is uh, inclusive growth for the economy. So with the digital uh, means, we're able to reach all the corners of the country uh, so people can easily be banked using their phones. And so uh, that is a big advantage we are looking at to, to bring in as many people into the network as possible. But also with this uh, uh, digital uh, means, transactions, the turnaround of transactions is pretty much faster. And so that generates more activities to the economy, generates more jobs. And uh, again, as we bring more people into the form of financial uh, uh, services, we are bringing more savings and more resources for investment. So it's, it's, it's both for the benefit of the individuals, but also for the benefit of the, of the country in general. Of course, from the central bank point of view, that makes our monetary uh, policy uh, transmission mechanism also easier because we, we have now the big chunk of uh, the broad money into the formal uh, financial services so, so we can easily monitor and uh, our instruments can easily have an impact on the on the transactions of the uh, of the economic uh, actors. So the, the, the lot of uh, advantages really with this uh, digital uh, financial services mainly linked on breaking the barriers, making transactions uh, uh, cost effective, and efficient and uh, convenient. Now the objective itself is a cashless economy. Can I just ask you, so how realistic do you think that, that final aim is when you look at other examples around the world of Sweden, for example, which hasn't quite hit that objective yet, it's, it's getting there, but where does Rwanda sit on the cashless curve? Um, I, I think when we say cashless, one can as well say cash light. We, we don't expect that to be completely zero uh, uh, cash transactions within the country, but uh, our aim is really to go as far as 90 something percent of the transactions done on digital platforms. And we are coming from a low base. It's uh, just in 2011, we had only 0.3% of our transactions done, 0.3% of our GDP of our transaction done using electronic or digital means. Just last year in uh, 2017, we had that grown to around 28%. Our objective is to grow it to about 80% by 2024. And when we look at the, 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 the infrastructure, the, the the backbone of uh, connectivity we have within the country, we have confidence that uh, this is going to be achieved. And government is leading uh, by example. Today, all government transactions uh, are done uh, using electronic means. Uh, we, the central bank, as uh, the bank of government, we transact government payments uh, to their suppliers, to their staff, to whoever using electronic means, using internet banking. So there are no cash, no check in government transactions. So we are already leading uh, by example. And we see a lot of investments going on uh, from the banking industry, from telecos and other fintechs uh, in this sphere. So we have confidence that uh, the 80% we have at least for 2024, we can achieve that. Then the other uh, important point here is about education. Uh, mm -hmm. So we leading as a central bank, working with other partners to educate the population on the benefits of using uh, non-cash means for their payments. Okay, and also you mentioned at the start this um, related issues of, sort of financial inclusion and digital payments. So could you just give me a sense of, of to what extent this sort of digital payments or digital economy is, is improving financial inclusion in Rwanda? Sure. Yeah, uh, when you look at the, we do Finscope is, is a survey that uh, indicates how far we've gone with financial inclusion. Way back in 08, I think the first one we did uh, showed that our form of financial uh, 
uh, inclusion was at 21%. Uh, uh, by 2012, this had moved to 42%. Then the dig talk, the mobile money kicked in, and by 20. Uh, 16, it had moved uh, to 68 percent of Rwandans formerly uh, financially included. Uh, and the, the increase between 42 to 68, with it 23 percent attributed to digital financial uh, services that came in between 2012 and 2016. Uh, and we, our objective has been to, in fact, this is a global objective today, to achieve 100 percent financial inclusion. Uh, by 2020, and as I said, when you look at the, uh, the innovation, the technology we have today, the weight has uh, now reduced the cost of using the, this uh, digital means. We have confidence that we can achieve this. There's a strong correlation there. And, yeah. and finally, Governor, just very briefly, we heard from uh, the Prime Minister uh, in the opening remarks of, of this mm -hmm. year's conference talking about Rwanda's economic outlook. And he mentioned that the first quarter of this year we saw growth above 10% um, yes. for the economy. So it's very strong numbers, but obviously the last few years have been difficult for the continent as a whole. Um, where do you see sort of Rwanda's medium term economic outlook? How, is it, how are things shaping up here? Yeah, when you look at our the macroeconomic framework for the next three years, we this year we projected to grow by 7.2%. Last year we grew by 6.1%. And next year we expected this to, to increase to about 7.8%. And by 2020 we should be around 8%. Uh, so that is the outlook. Of course, there are different factors that contribute to this, uh, but we see a stronger uh, economic growth going forward. Uh, when you look at the different investments that are being done within the country, we have confidence that we achieve this. Governor, thank you very much for your time today. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.